Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, July the 8th. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone to please turn off all your electronic devices and please refrain from texting or talking on the phone as that just interferes with recording equipment and us being able to hear what's going on. So, Madam Clerk, if we could have a roll call to establish quorum. Melissa Green. I'm here. Barry Meyer. I'm here. Vicki Schneider. Here. Terry McClung. I'm here. Susan Harmon. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. We have six. All right. If we can stand and have the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. <coughs> get a second? Second. Awesome. All right. Any, nice. Anybody have anything? We have a couple of items on here that uh, we need to defer under new business, the ordinance on the animal law changes on the animals and unoccupied property. And also, we have one just one person that has that, Miss Green, and I'm not sure who seconded that ordinance. Does anybody remember? It was not seconded. There was only a discussion. All right. Can I get somebody to second? To I'll second it. All right. And now then we'll defer that. And then we'll also defer the ordinance uh, right under that for the food trucks at special events and the ordinance for the permanent structures. And also item number three, the ordinance for aggregate sidewalks. We're still waiting on the ordinance for that. So items three, four, five, and six will be deferred. If there's nothing else, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so moved. Uh, get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A second? I'll second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes that submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Uh, we've got a couple of vacancies in applications uh, that are coming for you tonight. Uh, one is we have a vote on the Planning Commission uh, for position four, which expires 7 one from Katie Hendrickson. Motion to approve, Ms. Second. Hendrickson. Second. Any discussion? I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And also, uh, position seven, which expires on January 1st, 21, the vote is an application from Lord Joe. We make a motion to accept Laura Joe. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Welcome both of y'all to the Planning Commission. We appreciate it very much. I saw Laura somewhere through here, but uh, oh, there you are. So thank you very much for putting your name in and volunteering. <laughs> uh, We've got a, an application, or we've got a position with the CAPC that's expiring that uh, will be coming for us soon. And also, uh, we have set the date, I believe, for the workshop on the food trucks and special events for July 15th at 3 p.m. Here? I think at, uh, yes, at the auditorium. I think everybody's been notified and agree with everybody. Mm -hmm. So... What At, time? Uh, 3 p.m. All right, that brings us up to uh, public comments. So. We have a uh, representative uh, people here that have been asked if they can see their three minutes to one individual. It's up to the council on how they want to handle that. They want to speak for 10 um, minutes. The three individuals want to s I think it's three individuals who want to speak three minutes. I think it's three individuals. Is that right? How many individuals want to speak? Got one. How many speak? How many are here on this item? <laughs> one individual wants to 
wants to speak, and he wants to speak for seven minutes, hey, hey. and he wants, okay, you're grown by the minute, and he wants to accept time from two other people. We have one person to speak for two with two others, and that's uh, their time. It's up to the council on how they want to do that. Is it just in reference to one particular, one particular topic? Yes. That's an awfully long time for one topic, is it not? It's up to, up to the council. <coughs> yes, ma'am. I believe we made this a possibility to work it this way many years ago when I signed up 10 times, which would have been 30 minutes because they had never set any kind of an arrangement for it. So we should accept it rather than have three or four different people talking and all the time in between you have one person making one concise statement and it's done and over. Okay. Do I hear a motion or anybody to allow that? Okay, I think what we're doing is just going back to council decides we just need to hear from one individual at one time. Each each individual will get three minutes. If you whoever's speaking okay, so that's the decision. That's a decision. I hadn't heard from the council what's to do any different, so can I say something right now? No. Before, no, 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 you can come up and speak there's no vote to it. There's been no motion. Oh I thought I made a motion. There was no second. You're welcome to speak for public comments. Are you ready for me? No. Mr. Shipley's first. Mr. Shipley. Hi, my name is Mel Shipley. I have uh, two retail businesses downtown and two lodging spots downtown. And I'd like to address the notion, or not the notion, but the ongoing debate as to whether Spring Street should be closed at certain times to allow alcohol to be carried up and down the street. And uh, I'd just like to report that we really did have a great weekend this weekend. And uh, so Eureka Springs is doing very well this weekend. I understand the desire to try and keep things going every weekend and every day and every evening uh, and I'm not opposed to that. My only concerns about closing Spring Street is that the minute you shut that street off my business dies. We're at the top of Spring Street and when that trolley stops we just will as well close the doors because it's over for us. So when the subject comes up later on I'm just trying to get ahead of the ball a little bit. Um, I hope you keep in mind that 6 o'clock should be plenty of time for people to start drinking and carrying liquor up and down the streets and to house events on the street to, to encourage people to come to our stores. Uh, I do think that it will benefit the restaurants. It will benefit people selling alcohol. It will certainly benefit Basin Park. And that's not a bad thing. We want everybody to be successful. Uh, I just hope that we keep in mind that there are people that live on Spring Street and people who live uh, close to Spring Street, and the noise ordinance is paramount. We must keep our noise ordinance. If we should decide to go ahead and create a district, the city, I hope, does not give away an awful lot there so that we do have control of the noise because it bounces around off these hills and everybody's affected by it. We want to try and keep the city viable on all for that, but we have a lifestyle here that we certainly don't want to give up either. Uh, you guys got a heavy agenda tonight, so I'm going to go take over your time. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate you guys. I'm Marley Wilcox, and I own uh, property at 310 Spring Street. Um, as one of the six property owners within a hundred foot space of the recent application at 304 Spring Street listed to receive notification letters, I never received one. Only one of the six property owners to date has. Due to this, all I've had to rely on is what the applicant himself conveyed to me by phone. Um, I w one other thing I just wanted to point out in regard to this, um, this is the copy of the ordinance or whatever regarding the home occupancy, which I was not familiar with. 
this, uh, Mr. Cross obtained this copy um, at some point Friday, and I retained this copy Friday afternoon. Uh, my copy is worded differently on I than his copy. Um, one other issue is that it states on the next page that no home occupation shall require internal or external alterations, involve construction feature, or use mechanical equipment not customary in dwellings. Um, due to this, and they, they received approval on their concept design from the HDC. Due to this approval <laughs> given to the occupant by the city of Eureka Springs, this will be appealed due to the way it was handled. Um, the process is being researched now um, as far as uh, with, whether it will go directly to the city or to the circuit courts, as I understand it. Um, and I'm going to read you the letter that I wrote and read to the HDC because, uh, in case you are not up to date, anyway, it's as follows. First of all, I never received a letter regarding this application. I did, however, receive a phone call from one of the applicants. He mentioned several things in the course of the conversation regarding what they were trying to accomplish. A studio to do hair, which is also known as a beauty shop, adding a bathroom, and I don't know if this is a full or a half, I would like to know, and a pull-out sofa for their guests to spend the night. He said I would be receiving a letter, which I never received. He also told me that he had been working with Melissa Green and Glenna Booth and that they had both signed off on this and that it had been approved by the city. I went to City Hall to try to receive some clarification on this matter and was told it was approved because it is called a home occupation and they wouldn't have to um, have a CUP. Okay, so I have to quit. You did. I'm about finished. You did. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, will, I will send you all copies of this, okay? Okay. 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 Mr. Water. Robert Waters, 178 Madison, 8657. I don't have a great memory, which is why I made a few notes. But that does not mean that what I say to you tonight is not from the heart. I'm here to say some things that I hope will help a pretty good friend of mine, Marilyn Slois, and two very good friends of hers that you probably know, Miss Piggy and Fat Boy. Now, I've seen Fat Boy perform. Maybe some of you have seen it on the video. And he's smarter than any dog that I know. And he's as harmless as any dog I know. Now, I do some wilderness backpacking, and maybe some of you do that as well. And I know that there are black bears out there, but I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of them because they're, they're not dangerous. With one exception. What's that exception? You know what it is. It's when you get between a mother and her cubs. If you do it on purpose, you better have a good reason for it. And take precautions to be safe because she loves her babies and she will, without a second of hesitation, fight to protect them. Now, I sent a letter to the editor a few days ago about this. And I'm not given enough time to read it. I wanted to read it to you tonight. It would have been in your best interest to hear it, but... Not going to get to hear it, so I'm going to skip it and uh, try to get in what I meant to say in, in three minutes here. I'll, I'll just talk to the to the board here without uh, reading the letter that I wanted to read. Marilyn loves her pet pigs as much as any of you love your cats or your dogs. I ask that you reconsider the decision that was made some time ago based on uh, the following facts. That you already made a positive decision once, that in 1952 that law is irrelevant now, 
Since you did not come to know number three, something you did not come to know until perhaps this afternoon, I don't know if you did or not, that Fat Boy and Miss Piggy are registered emotional support animals. I've, I've seen and read uh, the emotional support documents in, in Maryland's possession, and it seems one or two of you, uh, one or two persons on the board has led the, the rest of you uh, right in between a bear and her cubs. It was done without good reason and with no safety precautions, which has put the rest of you at risk. Again, so I please reconsider the decision that you made recently that made it a crime for Mellon to keep her beloved animals at her home in the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Now, I'm not Marilyn's lawyer. I try to be nice. Her lawyer may not. Thanks for letting me go. Can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. time's up, sir. I won't say it anyway. If you want the copy of that letter, you can have it, and I'll resend it. Uh, if if y'all make a decision on this. Hi everyone. I'm Mark McGee, and uh, I'm not from this area here. I'm from the South, but uh, I know several of the people have uh, potbelly pigs, and I know how close they are to them. I'm sorry, where were you, your address? Your uh, name's Mark McGee, and where do you live? I live at Ozark. Ozark, Arkansas? Yes. Okay. And uh, several people in the community in that area have potbelly pigs. They've had them since they were little. And they have good neighbors, and some neighbors that, that uh, have other types of animals also. But uh, I've known Marilyn for several years, and... Uh, I just hope that you can reconsider what uh, what is described as livestock, which to me is cattle. When you have one or two of any four-legged animal, I, I can't see how it can be considered livestock. But you, uh, some people are just stuck in their own values, and uh, I just I just want you to hopefully can come to terms when you have good neighbors who have other pets. And, uh, and somehow the dilemma uh, brings to itself about maybe the stench of a pot belly pig or any other animal. There are some things you could probably consider. I know you've got your reasons and you've got your bylaws from the past. But there's things can be changed whether your decision is good or bad. Uh, you have to listen to yourself when you're uh, not amongst yourselves among your other family members or friends that do have other animals I just want you to uh, have a second thought about what uh, what entails what uh, most animals can do for you as far as a dog being a, a, a comfort a belly pig or chicken but I think that when people have uh, either a small yard or a large yard or a small farm, it, whether, whether it be inside the city limits or outside the city limits, there are things that we all have grew up with, having animals, and uh, it comforts people. You know, if you're not uh, eating something that takes your mind off of it or if you're smoking something that takes your mind off things from daily life, I, I wholeheartedly, being a, a farm manager, have cattle and whatnot, that there's things that comfort people, and uh, it, it goes deep. And when you have relatives, when you're trying to contain these values, I just, uh, I hope that you can uh, give us some thought for the long run. Thank you. All right, my name is Marilyn Slos. I live at Three Kings Highway. Um, Miss Piggy and Fat Boy's mom. Um, 
Yeah, I've had Miss Piggy for several years now. I've had Fat Boy for almost a year and a few months. Um, they actually bring a lot of laughter to tourists that come to this town. Um, you know, the tram or the trolley will come by the house and, you know, people have the same look on their face until they see the pigs and then the, they just go from, you know, boring to, oh, wow, there's a pig, you know, and they stop and take pictures and they just want to, you know, get to know them. And I've even had people to, you know, whenever they get off the trolley to come back and say, hey, can we, you know, stop and take pictures of your pig? And I'm like, sure, absolutely. And just to see that all the happiness that these two potbelly pigs bring to people it just it is so worth it and I know that one of the bed and breakfast at least eight or nine of her guests came a few weeks back it was on a Sunday they came and they visited with the pigs and they just they said they'll definitely be back for sure be, just because that the bed and breakfast is close to me and that they um, want to come back and visit with the pigs the next time they're in town. Um, so please, please, please reconsider and just, just let them, just let them be, you know, just hang out and let them be peaceful because that's what they are. Um, like I said, they just bring you happiness and they're definitely not livestock. You know, livestock is for meat purposes and I am not going to eat my kids for sure. Um, you know, livestock pigs, they get up to a thousand or more pounds. You know, pot belly pigs, they definitely won't be as big as that. You know, probably 350 max on pounds. Um, so they're just like any dogs or cats. You know, they, they love dressing up. You know, as, as big as Miss Piggy is, you know, she's just, she loves dressing up. She loves wearing hats. The same with Fat Boy. Um, as a matter of fact, last Halloween, you know, Miss Piggy, she was a uh, ballerina princess, and Fat Boy, he was a chef. So on Halloween, as we're getting the trick-or-treaters by the house, everybody just stops and, again, takes pictures, and they, you know, take videos, and they're like, yeah, we're definitely coming back next year just to visit with these pigs. So, oh, thank you. So just please, just... Just kind of just leave us alone. I just want to go to work and go home and love on my kids, you know. I am um, part owner of Healing Benefits Massage here in town. I've been doing it for nine years, going on ten years now. Um, so thank you very much for listening. My name is Keith Parnell of 151 West Van Buren, and I'm here in support of Marilyn and her pigs. Uh, I've known Marilyn for several years, and I knew her for several years before I moved to Eureka Springs. And one of the things that she expressed to me was the warmth and welcoming nature of the people here and the diversity and how uh, everyone is uh, gets along so well and uh, that open to uh, you know different ideas and things that might not be in other communities and it was part of the reason that I wanted to move to Eureka Springs and uh, I know that she loves and cares dearly for her pigs takes great care of them and I think that if you were to find a way to allow her to keep her pigs it would speak to the nature of the community and uh, reflect be a reflection of the warmth and welcoming nature of of the city and just for those reasons that I am supporting her and uh, hope that you find a way to allow her to keep her pigs. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Laura Jo Smoley. I live at 17 Pivot Rock Road number two and I know that you're probably getting close to time for revisions on your 2019 budget and it's never too early to start thinking about the 2020 budget. Um, in particular, I'd like to draw your attention to the great need for sidewalks on East Mountain and on Pivot Rock. Um, 
Several groups of people will be greatly served by those. There's a growing elderly community as we're all aging because of the apartments on Pivot Rock and uh, just the nature of the neighborhoods on East Mountain. Lots of children, children going to wait on the roads for school buses, no place for them to be off the road without being in the mud. That's not safe. Um, there's no regular transit, and those two are main feeder roads to the east and west sides of town. And without having transit, people have to walk down those roads to the highway. And again, it's getting more and more hazardous, especially um, as traffic increases. Um, I understand that Pivot Rock is going to be designated a go-around for the town, and also the uh, six-acre lot is being developed with housing, so our population is increasing, and this is going to be really necessary. Along with these two things, I think there's a need on both of those roads or near them for two small pocket parks uh, with fenced areas for children to play, um, maybe a half court uh, for a basketball court, and then all we need are some seats and some tables, maybe with checkerboards painted on them, so people can come and take advantage of those as uh, places just to sit and play and watch the traffic go by and <laughs> things like that. Um, I really appreciate you uh, considering that, and I'll be willing to give a bigger sales pitch if needed. Thank you. Okay. All right, that concludes our public comments. Uh, under new business, uh, item number one is the Strategic Alliance uh, Memorandum. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Get a second. I'll second. All right, we have uh, Ed Haddock is here with Small Business Administration and also uh, Jeff Salzar. Uh, Y'all have in your packet a memorandum that has been developed and actually uh, came out of Washington, D.C. and sent down to deal and work in conjunction with the United States Small Business Administration, the SBA. Um, I'm going to just throw a little thing in here. And I'm not going to... When I first moved to Eureka Springs and got out of college, um, the SBA helped me getting a loan to buy my building downtown Eureka. And if it hadn't been for the SBA, uh, there wouldn't have been a way that I could afford to do that or been a way to do that. And so part of the SBA is to encourage the development and economic vitality of Eureka. Um, I don't know who wants to talk a little bit about this, but Ed, would you want to go to it and give a little presentation on the memorandum that we have? Time cap as well. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, all the persons uh, of the board, we appreciate uh, this, this opportunity uh, to come in and partner with the city of Eureka Springs and on an economic development project uh, that lasts not only for one term, but uh, what we like to say a lifelong partnership uh, for our small businesses. We know Eureka Springs is a vital uh, small business ecosystem up here uh, in the, the trees and the beautiful hills of Arkansas. Uh, so I came up from Little Rock, Arkansas uh, with the power of our SBA Office's Strategic Alliances to build a multi-year partnership with the town in order to support our small business community throughout the state here. We want to make sure that all small businesses, uh, even yours, Mayor, uh, starts out on the right footing uh, with either the assistance of SBA capital access programs, access to financing uh, from the lowest dollar loan of $500 all the way up to loans of uh, over $5 million. Uh, similarly, we're positioned throughout the state of Arkansas right now responding to uh, ARC flooding of 2019, the major flooding that's happened. Uh, we come in with our disaster assistance team in order pr to provide disaster assistance to those small businesses, homeowners, and renters that are affected by natural disaster. So our capital access reaches far and wide. We're also here to support the community in contracting and working to sell their goods and services to the federal government who purchases over $425 billion worth of goods and services annually. We want to make sure that Eureka Springs and its small businesses are represented in that market equally as well. We're going to be providing uh, further one-on-one -on -one counseling and training with our small businesses throughout the community, working with the heart of Eureka and the C3 group in order to bring uh, SBA services 
resources where they're needed most by those entrepreneurs who need them most. So uh, with this signing of the Strategic Alliance, Mayor, uh, I think this will kick us off into a great multi-year partnership. Thank you all. I'll take any questions if you have them. Council members, have any questions? To yes, Ms. Snyder. Has this changed in the last few years? Didn't you used to also offer loans for people to start a business? We do. We offer loans. Oh, uh, I'm not I, seeing it in here. Oh, well, no. This is this is really to define our partnership on how we're working oh, together. Okay. We're okay. going to bring all the services that we offer, and that includes the loan guarantee programs that okay. help people start or grow businesses, uh, all the way out to the other components that I spoke about. Thank yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned something about the government contracts. Yes, ma'am. Is that through GSA or is that SBA? GSA is one agency. Uh, we work with all the federal agencies in order to do that. So SBA is a assistance program that we work with the small businesses to then offer directly to those federal agencies. That could be GSA, that could be NASA, that could be Army Corps of Engineers, that could be uh, the VA. So any federal agency does federal procurement contracting. Sir, uh, yes, sir. It, it's uh, it, what you're what you're presenting here is really pretty complex. There's a there's a lot to it. So, um, is there an area representative? How do we know? Absolutely. You know how 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 is a person going to know that? Hey, I want to do this, or I need that, and and where do I go? Alderman, I'll introduce you to my Northwest Arkansas Senior Area Manager, Mr. Jeffrey Salzer, who is your local contact here in Northwest Arkansas, in order to help us implement the partnership that we get to really work with your small businesses to design and see how it's going to fit in your community. Great question. Sir. High speed internet. Uh, that's a great question. I've already uh, been tackling that one earlier today. Stay citywide. Uh, we have a problem with that. It's not very good. Well, I don't have a bunch of money to give you to put one in place. But I know uh, working with our HUD uh, and USDA team, uh, our rural development folks, have resources for that. And my goal would be to connect you directly to them to see what kind of broadband enablement we can uh, help them look at for your community. It's essential for our small businesses to get online uh, with 96% of the customers living outside of the United States. Uh, it's essential our small businesses are technically enabled and uh, internet friendly so they can reach those customers throughout the world. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I haven't read through the whole thing, but I'm, I understand that you can work with small businesses. And how does, how does this, is there the opportunity for several businesses to join together or the city as a whole then to qualify? Yeah, I, I, what I would do, as a, if I could defer it to Jeff, he's been working with the teams up here to really talk about the implementation and the groups that we're going to be working with to bring the entire small business community into this partnership. It's not just with us in the city, it's with us and all the small businesses that are here. Okay. Jeff, if you want to come up and explain a little bit of the partnership and how it's evolved. And, and I think, too, I want the council to realize, too, this isn't for the city to go out and get money or grants. This is the opportunity for individuals within the city to apply and receive loans and guarantees. Uh, and what we will do is help promote that. Uh, on the second page, it gives us a little bit about what the city will do and, and what they're going to do. So this is a cooperation between the two. So basically between the mayor's task force um, and the city and, and the C3 group and all of those, the, the Strategic Alliance Memorandum on itself says basically that um, Eureka is a special place uh, and they want to grow businesses and the SBA wants to help them grow businesses. Uh, outside of that, if Sandy and I and the businesses in Eureka Springs don't work together, then we're just signing a piece of paper and my boss is driving six hours for nothing. But we really are passionate about, I'm passionate about Eureka Springs. When I moved to Northwest Arkansas what, three years ago, uh, Butch and Sandy were my first, um, they helped me out with one of my first big tasks that I had to do with the agency and, uh, and I just fell in love with Eureka Springs. So we want to make sure that entrepreneurs have every opportunity. And again, the Strategic Alliance Memorandum basically says that 
hey, we like you, you like us, we're going to do stuff together. But it, it's the follow through on that that we want to do. Um, because there, there's not going to be a special pool of money for loan guarantees for Eureka businesses. It just means that we're recognizing that the city and the SBA want to work together to grow economically, um, you know, the foundation for small businesses in Eureka Springs. Does that kind of clarify a little bit? So I'm hoping it's going to be awesome. But if we don't work together, it, it, it's just, it, it's a signing ceremony. So, but I know that Sandy will hold me to it. It really is going to be up to the community, the small businesses in the community. Uh, we have uh, a multitude of programs. We work with over 55 lenders to bring banks into the, the area. But it, it doesn't work if our community banks aren't involved. If our local banks aren't doing SBA lending, uh, we can't get the money to the, the businesses that need it most. I, I can put a business online and get them access to capital from a... Uh, a loan production facility out of New York that does SBA loans all day, but that's not helping the community. So we've got to not only educate our bankers and our banking community, but we've also got to educate the small businesses on these resources are available and they need to work with us in order to access those. Yes, sir. Is Arkansas Capital still, Corporation still going? Arkansas Capital Corporation is still going. They're uh, doing very well. Uh, they helped me. They helped you as well, huh? Fantastic. They are a community development nonprofit corporation that helps do 504 loans, which are fixed asset financing loans. Uh, they're around, and yet we've brought a couple more into Arkansas so we could uh, multiply the number of opportunities we have to get small business financing. If we can increase uh, those providers of capital access, we provide more opportunities for small businesses to start and grow. So I appreciate your time. I'll take any final questions. Yes, sir. In your introduction, you mentioned working with two types of organizations. I missed the first one, but the second one was C3. What was the first one? The, um, uh, I'm sorry? Heart of Eureka. Heart of Eureka, I'm sorry. And are those going to be like gateways for everybody, or can people come to you with... They can come to us directly. We're not going to mandate how they interact with us. Really, we're, we're available online anytime they want to come to us at sba.gov. Uh, Jeff is, is in the local area, and he hands out his card. I'll give you my card as well if you want to have them contact us directly. But what this is is really we know that there's a need in, in Eureka Springs because you have a ton of small businesses. Some of them are doing great. Some of them are having some of the best years they've had in in many years starting this year right the economy is starting to pick up but some of them aren't they won't tell you that you'll never know you'll never see it in their eyes but that's what they're thinking about every night when they go to sleep we want to make sure we're there for them as well uh, and that's not a conversation you're necessarily going to hear but they can come to us anytime and what we want to do is be able to help them at any stage of their business whether they're starting it up or they're getting ready to turn off the lights one of the uh, items also uh, that the city is going to be doing is putting a reference on our website to the SBA uh, and contacts for Jeff. So any citizen that's interested in wanting information can go and see the city's website and we'll have contact. And that's part of what this memorandum is about. Uh, so it, it's, um, it's just you know, trying to help everybody out. And, and we're open to new ideas, too. As an older person, you have the ability to affect change, and you have the ability to put into this strategic alliance and this partnership what you would like to see and how you think it could benefit your businesses that you know or your friends that own businesses. We're and open. And I will say that uh, the, the banks in the area, all, uh, all the banks that have been working in Eureka Springs are all familiar with the organization and, and have committed to SBA also. So... Anybody else, Mr. McClung? I'll just uh, direct this to you, I suppose, that if this is what you're, you're needing, is that I'd like to make a motion that the council approve the Strategic Alliance Memorandum between the United States Small Business Administration and the City of Eureka Springs. I'll second that. That's it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. We're going to have fun doing this, by the way. <laughs> what is should I do? Okay. Oh, you don't mean the signing. Right. <laughs>
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank all right. you. Uh, all right, that uh, brings us up to the next item, item number two. Motion to discuss the appointment of council members to planning. Um, motion to discuss. I'll second. All right. Ms. Green? Well, I think we got two great commissioners tonight, so I don't think we need to worry about this. I think we put it on just in case it ever got down to four. And I think maybe the only time a counselor should go back is if they're in desperate need of a quorum for something. I agree. I think we've all of a sudden solved a little problem. Okay. Well, any further comments? Nope. <coughs> all right. We'll go on to our next item then. Uh, we're skipping three, four, five, six. Uh, come up to item number seven. Mr. Chairman, with regards to that, uh, council member, shouldn't there be a vote on that? Or, or do I'm sorry. Just I'm, let I'm Melissa make the decision. Beg your pardon? Should there be a vote on that, uh, council member, or should Ms. Green just make the decision? Well, I mean, uh, what does council want to do? Bob, well, do, you have well, a, do you have a reference? Would you yes, like to I would move motion? to just put that ordinance aside until it's needed when there are four members on planning commission. I'll second that. Okay. Motion made to uh, put this ordinance aside. I've got my hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. I thought there was a six-month sunset on that. I don't think we ever got the ordinance written, did we? Correct. Yeah. The the appointment was for six months, but the ordinance was not for six oh, months. Oh, I thought I thought no. you were leaving it open for six no. months. No, the I'm just ordinance, the okay. ordinance is open ordinance permanently. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. The, yeah, the appointment was for six months. It wasn't the ordinance. Okay. I thought it was for the ordinance being open. No. Okay, so, Bob, would you, Mr. Thomas, would you repeat your motion again? Yes, move to postpone appointment of a council member to planning commission until there is a need when the planning reaches four members or less. And I second that. Any further discussion? Thanks, Bob. <laughs> all right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Four two. Okay, motion passes. All right, now we'll go back down to a discussion of transients in town. Uh, so get a motion to discuss. So moved to discuss. Second. All right, motion pa uh, for discussion. Miss Green, you want to lead off? Sure. Why don't we have Brian come up? <laughs> Since you you came all the way for us. Okay. Um. Mr. Young, over the last year, I've had numerous people with the panhandling, the breaking ends. I just had a friend that was carjacked by a transient. Um, could have killed a lot of people. Um, are we experiencing a problem? Every year, we have transients come through. I know we've I've seen transients come through here in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Some stay, some find homes, some move on. I know a lot of the ones that we have in here now, and I've heard people refer to them as transients, but they're not actually transients. They actually live here. Uh, they're buskers and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, my guys do make contact with them, even the transients when they come through. Okay, uh, They'll make... Uh, uh, consensual contact with them, identify them, see what's going on with them, just to let them know that they're here if, if they're doing anything wrong. You know, they keep an eye on them, they let them know what they're doing wrong, whether they're hanging out in the park, even trash behind in the park, or whatever. You know, they identify them, they let them know you don't do that. Um, issue them citations if they need to. Um, but um, at first this year, uh, I know we did have a little wave come through. But it's, that wave has backed off some. Yeah, we do have transients come, come and go, just like we have every year. Okay. But a lot of the people uh, who, I'm not saying everyone, but I know some of the people that uh, has mentioned certain things to me about certain transients or call them by name, but those people are not transients. They actually live here or they have places where they live. 
they may not actually live inside the city. They'll walk into the city and so on and so forth. But they actually have a place where they live. Well, I've been told there's like a website to come to Berryville and Eureka Springs. for. They have their own Now, I, I've never seen the website. But no, I, I haven't either. Right, I've just I, been but told. But I can tell you this for a fact, and I, and I believe I actually told Mr. Meyer this before. Uh, a few years ago, we had dealt with one down on North Main. Uh, he was intoxicated. He actually fell into a ditch. <gasps> okay. He crawled himself out of it. He wound up going to the hospital. But I asked him, I'm just consulting in conversation, how did he wind up here? And Kansas City put him on a bus and sent him here. <laughs> That's what he told me. They gave him $100 to put him on a bus and your experience would be a good place to go and send him here. I didn't see that up on Kansas City. That's just what he told me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I have also heard that the place to say Eureka Springs is a good place to come. So do you, now, do you feel we're experiencing, I mean, I've had people say mm -hmm. their cars have been rifled, their sheds have been broke into. Mm -hmm. I, I believe fresh mm -hmm. have been now, broken into. And we, we did go through a rash of break-ins in, in the past. Okay. Those were not transients. Okay. Actually, they, they've been arrested or incarcerated right now. Okay. okay. Oh, there good. Was actually, that was two, just two people. We're doing the majority of that. Okay, good. Okay, but they're they're actually locked up right now. Oh, good. Um, so it's, since those two have been arrested, it's pretty much our uh, property crime has dropped. Okay. Okay, good. since those two. Um, but at this point in time, my personal opinion, and I'm just giving you my personal opinion because I don't have stat numbers stuck in right. my head, is there's not any more at this point in time than what we've had in any other past. Okay. So it's just more or less people mm -hmm. are seeing something like you said, the, the two burglars mm -hmm. and attributing it right, to right. the transient. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and, and until we was able to identify those two, we didn't have any I have a clue. Okay. But once we got those two, I mean, it just fell in line, multiples. Okay. And actually, up in Stone County, Missouri and everything, I mean, it was everywhere around here. And, and I'm not like trying to be mean because no, I not. think in this great country mm -hmm. it's sad that anybody's hungry or homeless. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just passing on what my constituents mm -hmm. have kind of been asking for mm -hmm. the last year about and complaining and you know. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know that there's some mm -hmm. problems, but mm -hmm. and it's like you know, it's like I, I talked to Mr. Meyer the other day. All I'm all about if someone's down on their luck. Hey, and, and I don't know of another community like ours who's willing to help people. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if, if they're willing to, if they want help and, and they, they want to contribute to society, I support them and, you know, backing them whatever they need to do to get, get a step up. But then, you know, we also know all the other ones that just, just fly by night and just leave their trash and just go right on down the road. And I'm just like the rest of the citizens, you know, that's, you know we, we just soon not, not have them here. But... We can't go out and violate any of their civil rights either. Right, right. right. One last question, mm -hmm. and this doesn't pertain to Eureka, but is there a homeless camp behind Walmart's? I've been told that. I've heard that. I've never seen it. Yeah, I, I, I've heard. I have heard that. Okay. That uh, Walmart did allow some of them to live back there. Okay. Um, I know Berryville has a problem with them over there. It's actually worse than ours. Yeah. Well, that's that's supposedly <laughs> what's on the website. Than ours. And okay. I don't know if they don't have, because I, I've seen a lot of panhandling going on in Barrettville. Okay. So I, I don't know about their ordinances over there. Okay. But we All have right, let's try to keep them to Eureka Springs. Okay, <laughs> but I just was curious, because right. I think yeah. that's where well, they're... Yeah, they, they have, they've got a, quite a few of them over there. Okay. Actual homeless over there. But Ms. I think they're... Ms. Harmon? Yes, ma'am. Real quick question. Mm -hmm. um, can, do you know how many places are here in Eureka Springs that do accept transients or the homeless that that assist them and the reason I say that is is if, if there truly is a website out there or mm -hmm. if there's information out there that says Eureka Springs is a good place to go mm -hmm. is it because we have numerous places for them to get assistance or is it because of our weather or is it because of just the makeup of the town? I mean, I what think, is I the reason? I think it has two things. Two things. One, the makeup of the town. The other is we do have places that, that will help them out. And how, how many do you think we have here in town? Um, the one as far as the, the true transients letting them come in and everything, I know that uh, Keller's Country Dorm out there has been letting people stay back there uh, with their showers and food bedding and stuff like that. Um, 
And supposedly there's also another man who's advertised, now not for the multiple, not for multitudes, but just for like one or two, that he'll give them uh, uh, shelter and food and everything to help him fix up a house. And supposedly that was all put on social media and everything. Okay. But there also is other, you know, like you know, Echo and everything else coming in. But I don't know, and I don't know the rules of Echo, but I think he's got a lot more string, stringent rules than just transients coming in and staying. Okay, so you know there are locations that mm -hmm. are... That do take them in, that yes. That do take them in. Yes. And do you know what their, re uh, I don't want to say requirements, do you know how long they're allowed to stay? No, I do you not don't know have that. Any, you don't mm -hmm. have any yeah. of that? Like okay. I said, Keller's Country Dorm is one of, the, one of the biggest camps that I know that they go to. I don't know how many of them is there. That's it's, in the it's county. Not within the That's city. And that's in the Modern county. Yeah, that's in the county. But that's that's why you see a lot of them coming in from okay. 62 coming from that way. All right, thank you. So, as far as arrests are concerned, this year have not been. I mean, of course, you've had complaints and mm -hmm. crimes have been reported, but uh, yeah, we don't have any more arrests than what we have any other year. As a matter of fact, I actually have a homeless man right now incarcerated within our facility. I, you know, I understand why a lot of mm -hmm. people come through here during the season. Mm -hmm. There are seasonal jobs, mm -hmm. and there are restaurants that need dishwashers and so forth. And those places will find a place mm -hmm. for these people to stay because mm -hmm. they need them yes. through the season. Mm -hmm. And then they move on to someplace mm -hmm. else when the season ends. Yeah, so. thinking, and a lot of us, especially if we lived here over the years, especially when there's music festivals going on south of us, mm -hmm. you always see a large influx come through with their guitars and everything. They'll stay a couple of days and then they'll disappear on out there. But, uh, the few criminal acts that happened in my neighborhood since I've lived here mm -hmm. were committed by somebody that lived yeah. here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they got caught and yes. it ended mm -hmm. and that was that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I just have a real quick yeah. thing. Yes, um, how long do you, I mean, there isn't any restriction as far as how long somebody can stay here in that situation. So if you guys have identified Mm -hmm. And you've said, okay, you know, you, we, we saw you last week, we see you this week, we see, you know, are you staying anywhere? Nope, still not staying anywhere. How long do you allow, you, you don't have No, I mean I, I mean, I can't just kick them, I can't arrest them for right. just being okay. homeless. Uh, okay. Right. But uh, like I say, uh, th there are ordinances, like if they're camping right. uh, on city-owned property, they can't do that. They can't trespass on someone else's property okay. to, uh, to camp and whatnot. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Chief. Right. Mr. Young. Thank you so much. Oh, no <laughs> All right, that brings us up to uh, item number eight. You get a motion to discuss the amendment for the new fireworks ordinance. Make a motion to discuss. I'll second that. All right, Ms. Snyder. Um, I understand the fireworks went well Saturday night, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I didn't hear any sirens, so I assume they did. I had two cats and two dogs all in my lap. Um, an awful lot of people are extremely concerned about the safety of our very old wood town and would really, really, really like to see us take the new fireworks ordinance, which I had voted for thinking it was just making it legal what we had done for decades um, and not thinking about it being in town I was totally turned around on Marble Flats and had a different mountain in mind at Leatherwood what they would really like to see is that now that we've made it legal again to do what we've been doing that we make it city run or organized however you want to put that and in the Lake Leatherwood area only, not in downtown city limits, meaning our historic city limits. Um, they are real concerned about private property, about car accidents. You know, a firework goes off, somebody coming by not knowing they're going on can run somebody over, wreck their car, whatever. They're very, very concerned about that. And <laughs> I got to be honest with you, the fact that y'all sat there and said, well, the city can't be sued because we've got tort immunity did not make any of them very happy. It was like, okay, so the fireworks start my house on fire and I'm the one responsible. They were real upset about that comment, whether it's true or not. But they would really like to see this limited to 
outside of historic city limits. That's what they're asking for, and I don't know if we can do an amendment on that or not. I'm assuming we would have to vote on it, but that's what the people are asking for. They don't mind the idea of it going at a different time than the 4th, but they do want it out of the city limits. Ms. Green? Um, I've heard really wonderful things. The negatives I've heard were people on North Main said their windows and their houses just shook and rattled. Their animals were upset. I, I personally don't know if I think Marble Flats is the best place. I don't think a good portion of our city are people that live in the city that these were supposed to be for. I, I couldn't see them, and my house has no trees. They just weren't that high and stuff. So I don't know. I think it was a great thing. I think it needs to be tweaked. I don't disagree with Mickey. Maybe it needs to be moved somewhere else. But I think it could be a wonderful festival and a wonderful draw for our city. Mr. McClung? I was just going to ask uh, the, the police chief if they had any complaints. On the fireworks that night? Did you have any accidents? Anybody run across, run into each other because of the fireworks? No. Stopping in the middle of the road? And no. Okay. Mr. Thomas? Another question also. After the fireworks were over, mm -hmm. talking about shaking windows and stuff, there were four huge booms. No fireworks, just huge booms at my house that shook my windows. Was that connected at all with the, the fireworks was display was over? Uh, unless it was just some of their, their leftovers or something that they might have that they might have sent off like most fireworks shows. Oh, sorry. I'm used to my voice carrying more. So, that's why. <laughs> so I mean, that, that's just kind of what I would assume. Uh, we didn't, I didn't have anything on my vlog to say any different. Uh, so I know most fireworks shows, sometimes they'll have a few duds and at the end after the grand finale, after a few minutes, they'll send up a few more getting rid of their duds. Mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm assuming that's what it was. That's what it was. From what I, my viewpoint was, that mm -hmm. was just a few minutes later and then they <coughs> shot the last mm -hmm. few off and that was the end of it. But it was all from the same spot, same. Mm -hmm. I was same people say that when the night. fireworks were going up in the air, my windows weren't shaking, but mm -hmm. those four booms at the end were the ones that shook mm -hmm. it up. No, we, we, didn't, we didn't have any reports on anything. Yeah. Mitch yeah. Snyder? We've always called those bangers. Almost every display will mm -hmm. have bangers at the end. Um, did y'all do any checking on 4th of July where the fireworks that were loud were going off in town? Yes, they did have some complaints of them, yes. Yeah, but did mm -hmm. anybody find anybody or where or anything? They were loud. No, no one got, no one had, no one found anyone. But I do know okay. some complaints uh, yeah. in your neck of the woods, you might say. Oh, yeah. Because the next loud. day, I talked to uh, a business owner down there. I and I did put extra patrol down there. That yeah, I had me scratches so. from my cat going crazy <laughs> that night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What's your wish? Well, I, I would like to have an amendment added to the ordinance that these are not held within the historic city limits. Yes, I'm making a motion. All right, we got a motion that uh, fireworks not be held inside city limits. Histor the historic, historic, si historic city limits. Historic city limits. Okay. Do um, I have a second? I'll second that. Discussion? Let's do a roll call vote. Mr. Thomas? No. Mr. Meyer? No. Ms. Harmon? No. Mr. McClung? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Of course. Four two. It's logical. All right. Shame uh, all right. Next item is uh, item number nine. Get a motion for discussion on consideration of the entertainment district in Eureka Springs. I move to discuss. I'll second. Mr. Thomas? I said that backwards. It was too far. I have a feeling that if we took a vote now, we probably would vote to have an entertainment district in Eureka Springs. However, you can have an idea and it can be implemented in a good way or it can be implemented in a bad way. Uh, I just would hope that if we 
I'm not sure that council can influence how the entertainment district is defined. If that's I'm sorry, you, you, you're not sure what? If council oh. can, it, can uh, make suggestions about how the entertainment district should be defined, because I'm all about citizen input and not just some one person or two people making a decision. Uh, so I'm going to move that we create an entertain that we create a committee of representatives from the tavern and restaurant industries and from the pri other businesses and private citizens to talk about the to talk about where it will be, what the limits of it will be, that kind of, what the constraints on it will be. That's my motion. Can I mm -hmm. can I qualify your motion, if you don't mind, of having uh, a member of the city council, a member of the planning commission? Yes. I'm uh, sorry, I forgot that. We want a member of the uh, restaurants, uh, lounge, and the other business, other kinds of businesses, and and one other private other citizens, merchants. Chamber. I mean, I'd like to make right. a member of the chamber. Okay. And a policeman. And a policeman. That would give us five. I mean, the public's always allowed, but that would be a basic committee. Okay. Okay? That's my motion then. I'll second. That's qualified by the chairperson. I'll second that. Okay. okay. Yes, Ms. Harlan. Can you just clarify who, who you think should be on that committee again? Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Member of the Planning Commission. Okay. Um, a member of the uh, restaurant in there. I'm just, Planning, uh, public, uh, police department. Police That's department. Five. Okay, I've got four. Chamber of Commerce, Planning, Restaurants, Police. Council. Other Council. businesses, Council. 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 Planning. Is that five? Mm -hmm. So you should probably have lodging two, right? Because there are lodges, lodging places downtown. Did yeah. I miss one? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, right now, I mean, I guess. I guess I'm, I'm envisioning immediate downtown, <laughs> and I, I don't. Yeah, know. I mean, Basin Park, but there, there are also the restaurants, too. Well, uh, I, I just thought, because you said restaurants, and you said something about retail, I guess you should have retail restaurants and lodging. Right? Um, all right, let's 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 do this again. Okay, we got got uh, restaurants and other business, which would be uh, retail. Uh, citizen. Citizen. Planning Commission. Council. Council. PD. Police Department. Taverns. Not all taverns are restaurants. That's restaurant tavern. Restaurant. That would be kind of restaurant tavern, I guess. Is that what you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want restaurant taverns? I'm saying, I, aren't there some taverns that are not restaurants? Yes. They have to serve food. No. Oh, they they all have, have to serve food. food. Okay. Yeah. And they're all restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So since this is your motion, do you want it two separate units? No, I tell you what, leave it as one unit, but make it two people. I'm concerned. You know, any, any tavern owner is going to say, I want it in front of mine, you know. Uh, so I think there should be maybe one from each end of town or some, you know, some kind of representation okay. besides just one tavern person wanting it in front of his or her restaurant. Yeah. So if we can get it on there. Mm -hmm. So that gives us six or seven. Two, five, six, eight. Without lodging. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think. Wait, okay. <clears throat> Once again, okay, we'll, we'll have got restaurant merchants, or re merchants retail. Uh, now, the citizens would be. That's three. You want the average John Doe citizen? I think the one private citizen would okay. be appropriate. Uh, city council, it's four. Planning commission, uh, PD. And then we got one restaurant, and then we got, say, basically a tavern restaurant. So that'd be two. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Ms. Snyder? Um, before we get too far in there, can we hear from the police chief? I realize you've got police on there, but he might have some good input in regards to how this would help, hurt, or affect Eureka. Chief? Yeah. Um, the, uh, as far as the entertainment district, I'm sorry, do you have a question, ma'am? Go ahead. I just, I just had a question. Oh, go ahead. So. Go ahead. You do your thing, and then I'll ask my question afterwards. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the entertainment district in Eureka Springs, um, do I think the possibility of one here would be a, a, a pretty good idea? Uh, possibly. Do I think that it's going to be good downtown? Not necessarily. The only thing that I worry about is thinking in the past, as far as all the old blues fests and stuff like that. Uh, with people with open alcohol on the streets and everything else, that could be a really bad deal, especially with our terrain, the sidewalks, the steep inclines. We can, to me, I think it's just asking for some, a lot of incidents, especially drinking on the streets, uh, possibly more younger people because then no one's IDing them inside uh, bars and everything like the old Blues Fest was. There could be more fights and stuff like that outside in a confined area like that. That's just, that's, my, that's just my personal opinion. Well, and the police is going to have somebody on the committee yes. anyway. So. I got, I've got a question for yeah. you, Chief. Is that why we don't have the, the armbands for the Blues Fest anymore as we go from bar to bar? Right. Because yeah, of yeah, that, they used that to do problem. all that stuff, yeah. Right, Ms. Harmon? I just have a question. Um, as far as the city goes, we don't, we don't have any restrictions on whether or not we assign one entertainment district or two, or three, or four, do we? According we to state law, you can do whatever, I think we can establish whatever we want. Okay, that's what I thought. It didn't yeah. really specify, right? True. Okay. As long as it's contiguous. Okay. Ms. Green? Just a question for you. What do you think about, like, closing Spring Street off if we were to have an entertainment district? Isn't that going to cause some traffic problems? Because that's pretty much sure. Let's get the committee. <laughs> Let's let the committee. I think you're getting it. Yeah. Okay. I think Mr. McClung's correct. Okay. All right. The motion actually is to establish a, a committee to come up with, with uh, feasibility regulations and proposal. Correct. So, And it's going to consist of eight people. Yes. Um, on there. So, any, Mr. McClellan? Uh I would like to make an amendment to that and see what everyone thinks. But I think it would be a good idea if we, if we gave them a a, a time frame, uh, you know, to try and uh, get this organized and come up with something within uh, no longer than six months. I mean, if, if this is something we want to do, I think we'd like to have it in place for next year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's just my thoughts. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor of the amendment, sing five or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, all right. Vote on the motion? V yeah. Uh, all those in favor of establishing committee, uh, sing five or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I will contact people and. Uh, Mr. Thomas, I'm going to probably have you see if you would you want to be the the council liaison. Oh, I'm the most entertaining person. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you brought it up, uh, you know, yeah. get up there and entertain us, Bob. But you're, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Next item is motion to discuss uh, mid-year budget review date. So moved. Get a second. Go yes, sir. Um, I think everyone's been contacted. Uh, what we're looking for is July 22nd, 5:15, for a budget review, which is our last meeting of this month. I, I don't. I was not contacted. Well, you weren't. No. Oh. Well, okay. This is our regular budget meeting. Right. And then what we're planning on doing was have budget review at that time for mid-year budget. I don't I mean, like the 45 minute restriction. Beg your pardon? I don't like the 45 minute restriction. Well, would you like to set it another time? Uh, Four o'clock? That would work for me. Two hours would certainly be more than enough. Yeah. I okay, 430. 430. It's going to take a while. 430? It's probably all right. Okay. I need to 
say that there's also a very important fireman's pension meeting, which will probably be a challenge for me. It'll be a very challenge for me. <laughs> uh, what time is it? It's at 4. Right. Uh, You'll be done by 4.30? No. 4.45. This chair. Yes. In the past, we've actually decided to hold this on a day not, not on. before council okay. meeting. Like on the, the 15th, maybe? Well, we've got the, yeah, then on the uh, 29th. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm not sure if we can get everything together. That's a problem. I and mean, we're pretty sure we can get everything together by the 22nd. Uh, and I'm not sure if everybody's got their calendars or not. Uh, 29th? All right. 29th? The next Monday? When the 29th would be the next Monday. Okay. Would that be satisfactory to everyone? I At 4 o'clock or 4.30? Well, you know, if I don't work, so I'm not sure what... I'm trying to ask <coughs> if 4.30 is satisfactory. Fine with me. Anytime. Okay. Okay. So I move to hold the mid-year budget review meeting on July 29th at 4.30. All right. Any further discussion? Here or at the court office? No, you'll be here. Yep. All right. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, okay. Uh, I think, did somebody second that? I second it. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. McClellan. Okay. All those in favor of July 29th at 4.30 for the budget review? Saying five by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right, so moved. All right, that brings us to uh, agenda setting. <coughs> Ms. Green? I'd like to uh, have a discussion on our meeting place at the auditorium. Okay. I'll second that. All right, anything else? All right, hearing none. Uh, City Council comments. Mr. Thomas? We started Mr. Thomas last time. <laughs> oh, come on. You're so good. I don't like that everybody else gets the last word. <laughs> Could we start at the other end of the table tonight? All right. We can go to the other end of the table. I don't care, Mr. McClung. Good. Council comments? Council comments. Good to be here. <laughs> Mr. Meyer? I enjoyed the fireworks. Most everybody I talked to did, and I think we need to do it again. Ms. Harmon? Nothing. Ms. Snyder? Um, I wanted to do this at the beginning of the meeting, but wasn't permitted. So I am apologizing to all of our residents for my behavior, my lack of temporal control at the last meeting. I had been deathly ill for a whole month and should not have been here. But I had already missed one meeting and felt very guilty about it, so my husband brought me in, helped me up the stairs. The people that were here tonight saw I'm still not up to snuff as I fell at the top of the stairs today and have a bruise this big on my leg now. So I do apologize for my lack of temper control. I'm normally a little bit better than that here. It gets a little bit frustrating when you keep trying to clarify when a misconception or a misnomer is being done and that was the problem we were not changing any laws we were merely going to allow two little guys to be grandfathered we were not changing laws we're keeping livestock laws as usual but I do apologize I was very upset with myself I watched the meeting both times yet the next day and was absolutely upset with myself I normally have much better control but as you can see I had zero so I apologize for being rude and out of line to the people other than that just want to remind everybody we are here to represent the people the residents and the businesses not each other or to hold grudges we are here to represent the people to the best of our ability thank you very much Ms. Green um, I just want to clear something up, and I hate using my council comments to defend myself, but we had a speaker tonight that while I have asked her and her lawyer to quit using my name, I have had nothing to do 
with an application at 304 Spring Street other than I work for the two gentlemen and told them when they asked me a question to go down and talk to Glenna to apply for a CUP. That's the extent of it. I have not signed off on anything. There are no papers with me signed off. There's no tape. There's no recording. And I'm really tired of like saying that I um, signed off and gave them something. I didn't. I haven't seen any of their applications. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I would, since I, well, since all the people that voted uh, to implement the original livestock ordinance were kind of lambasted last week, I'd like to kind of put it a little perspective in it and go back and look at how this actually originated. And uh, I went back through the minutes and found out where it started, but the minutes don't really say exactly what was said. So I went to the Democrat Gazette article, and then I found an article that was from the Five News Online, and I'd like to read a couple of quotes uh, about how the pigs came to the attention of the city of council. It says, uh, this is about an ordinance to ban pigs. Alderman Mickey Schneider said she made the proposal at Monday's council meeting because of complaints about the smell coming from a residence on Kings Highway where two pet pot-bellied pigs were often in the yard. Neighbors are being wiped out by the extremely odorous pig poop, Schneider said. Basically, it will require changing one word in the city code, she said. Uh, it shall be unlawful to keep any hogs, horses, mules, cattle, goats, or sheep. The word hog should be changed to swine, Schneider said. While hogs and pigs are different, swine encompasses all of them. In talking to quite a few of our area vets, they said while a pot-bellied pig is a different critter from a hog, I'm still quoting Ms. Schneider, while a pot-bellied pig is a different critter from a hog, it can still push 200 pounds, which is not really cool in your backyard in the middle of a Victorian village. And then they referenced the comment that Melissa Green made at the August 27th meeting uh, about the problem with the pigs. She said, because of not cleaning it up, the smell makes it pretty unbearable for neighbors to be in their backyard. That's from the Five News Online. The Democrat Gazette article uh, basically says the, so, so the same thing. It says, Snyder said she proposed the word, wording modification Monday following complaints about the smell coming from a home that keeps two pet pigs in the yard. And Ms. Alyssa Green was quoted again that the pig's waste makes it unbearable for neighbors to be in their backyard. So I just, you know, we have to weigh the pros and cons. There's people on each side, and uh, I didn't bring the pigs to the council. All right. All right. Uh, Mayor's comments. Um, on the events, we got to July 12th through the 14th, we had the Fat Tire Festival. We got three days of downhill, short rides, and cross country biking. Uh, this is an incredible event. If you've never seen, the uh, Fat Tire Festival, boy, it's time to come out. It's amazing what those guys can do on the guys and girls can do on the bikes. Uh, on the 12th, uh, all at the Odd at 8 p.m., we got Chad and the Sad Palomino, and then the 13th, we got the Second Saturday Gallery Stroll at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Downtown Galleries. On the 19th through the 21st, the Eureka. Three days of multi-sports competition, and that's always a unique uh, thing to watch also. And then on the 20th, we got Music in the Park, 5 to 7, with Arlo McKinley, McKinney, McKinley and the Lonesome Sam. So if I can get a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. So moved.